Well, hello everybody. It is time, I guess, to do the thing, do the tier list thing. Okay, so let me switch. So what we're doing today, we're gonna make a tier list of all the levels in RR. Now I'm gonna make two of them. One of them is gonna be a casual playthrough, and one of them is gonna be in speed running, because those are a bit different in terms of ranking, in my opinion. These are gonna be worthy. So before we start, let me add some music. Come um, real quick. It's gonna be R two and R three. And it's gonna play here in the background, so it won't be boring. And yeah, that's how it's gonna go. Um, shuffle. Okay. I think this should be fine. In case I can switch a volume of audio. Or whatever. <sighs> All right. Let me add this. Oh, well, that's never mind. Okay, I'm gonna have to... Uh, here we go. This should be fine. I'm gonna move OBS here. In case, um, I'm gonna... I have to sell my second monitor so that I can skip Groove Armada Mada in case it's copyrightable. So, yeah. I think we can start. I'm gonna make music a bit low in volume. Again, you can say whenever it's too low. Alright, let's start. We're gonna do casual first. Alright, who's of light? Uh, for the fight, I'm gonna come jail as well. So for casual playthrough, I think this level is alright. In terms of introducing all of the kinds of things you can do. Jumping, running. Sliding, I don't know. I think in casual playthrough, it might be a bit boring, I guess. And it's a bummer that you can visit only once. But I think this was alright. I'm gonna place it in, let's say, B. Start off in neutral. Also, I may not really describe all why I think some placements are what they are. If that happens, I'm sorry. <laughs> However, I'm gonna count hub worlds as well. So, Minnesota's plane is next. And I think it's pretty alright for hub world. Although, you do have a lot of open space, but like, you don't utilize it often. But let's just say um, there are Minisaurus, which is nice. Um, there are a lot of lumps there. You can access levels through an open area again. Um, and I think this is what hub worlds should be like: place open spaces where you go to a different level or something. And also do a quest or something, which is not the case here, sadly. Whatever. I think this is a good hub world. Although there are maybe better ones. I think this is gonna go with the same rating as Minnesota's Plane. Alright. Next up is the East Plane. This is the worst... Uh... Hub world, definitely. There's just nothing to do. 
pirates come out of um come out of the door right here. Let me say this better. Through the door right here. And there are like a tons of them. I mean you guess you can grind health that way. But then they're gone and then it's just boring. And I guess um glow boxes kids walk around here. You can free some of them even. Um, but yeah, there's pretty much nothing to do here. Which is pretty lame in my opinion. Uh, I'm gonna place this... You know what, I'm actually gonna place this in... I'm debating between C and D. I'm gonna place it in D, sadly. Because it, it's just boring, there's nothing. Although I gotta say, I do quite like Lee's house, I like the detail ad that they added. So like the the indicator that you're going high, higher and higher. No, actually I'm gonna move this to C. Yeah, it's just it's it's nothing better at all, Sally. It's not gonna be any better than that. I think it's low C. Whatever. Fairy Glade. This one of D levels, in my opinion. First section is pretty cool, I gotta say. Section 2 is also. Alright, the first section, I really like it how the stronghold that you go into is like locked in a building. And like in the other versions, where you like can see a bit of the outside. I kinda like that. Mm. It's fairy rate four. Um, it's a little jail. There are little jail cells. I'm not particularly a huge fan of that area, to be honest. And it's because it can be a bit confusing as to where to go. But that might be just me, I guess. Um, what else? I really like how they ended. It. How made the area with the barrel bigger than what the other versions did? I really like that. Um, how you go through pipes and such. Um, and Fairy Glade Five. It's okay. It can be a bit boring though. Overall, I think it's a pretty solid stage. I must say. I think I'm gonna put an eight tier. No, it's a bit long, but I don't think that's the issue at all with it. Just not the most phenomenal thing of all time, definitely, but it's still pretty good, in my opinion. Bayou! Huh. Bayou, what can I say about it? You run from... You run from the pirate ship in the first section. In the second section, free bzit. Um, I really like how you can free bzit from Raymond one. I really like that. Um. Yeah, and then he becomes useful for entering quarter nice. Just okay, I guess. Oh yeah, I haven't talked about um backtracking. Um, the most amount of backtracking is in Fairy Glade. Um, it doesn't. Make it worse in my opinion. So I'm gonna so it's gonna say like that. In the bio it's not used that much. Um and it's a bit annoying actually. I'm gonna explain why. So you know the area where you hit the switch and then the bridge um becomes open or in case of Revel uh, purple worm comes out of the tree. Well, um, there is one lum. Wait, wait, no. I'm thinking of speedrunning thing, that's not good. Actually, this is pretty alright. Backtrack, never mind, I already like my statement. This is alright, this is alright. Um, yeah. I don't know if I have much to say. I think it's pretty solid overall. But, and the atmosphere of the. It's really good here. The gameplay here is cool. It's pretty decent. 
What? Yeah, because I'm on the layer here. What? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I selected the wrong tool. A uh, fairy glade. No, yeah, bio. Uh, bio is going in too. I wanna say B. I'm not really a fan of darkness, honestly, but that's just me. Normally, this level is pretty cool. I would say. Alright then, next up. Water and ice. What a level. Mm. I gotta say, there are a lot of pirates here, definitely. Which is nice, it means that um, they're protecting the entrance to the sanctuary, but what I'm confused about is why can't they figure out how to open the door? I mean, don't you have, like, explosives or something? Or something that can demolish landscape? Because if that was the case, then you definitely could, like, enter the sanctuary. But to be fair, me, do not, they know about Axel inside the temple, I don't know. Um, I really like the music here, it's pretty cool. Um, the ore puzzle is pretty alright, I would say. I don't like that it sometimes uh, doesn't auto-target the pyramids well, but that might be just me. And for the second section, what I really hate is the placement of the last two lumps. Where in the little corridor thingy, when you're sliding down, you have to jump in the correct time to get two lumps. And if you do not do it correctly, you have to uh, reload the part, which I find a bit annoying. And then the axle boss fight is nothing phenomenal. You just swing from lump to lump. But I could see this being kind of cool, I guess. Thank you for the follow. And you get the first mask, which is really cool. Sure. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna ra rate this... I'm gonna rate this... Not gonna lie, I wanna rate this A, but that's gonna be a low A. Um, yeah, we're gonna go and do the A tier, why not? Um, let's see, glow boxes, house, oh boy. Alright then, here's the deal. There are no lumps in this hub world, which I find a bit annoying, because it doesn't make you explore that much. However, there is one cool thing that I like. And the thing that I'm talking about is that there is literal glow boxes house in the area right there. I really like that. And then you can see on the mountains in the background. Of course, they aren't real, but you can see them, which I find pretty cool. I guess. Mm, what else can I talk about? Yeah, I like how after Man Who Hills you unlock the um the shell which allows you to enter the canopy. Overall, I think this is pretty decent. I would say this is on the level of Minosaur's plan. How about that? But I, I haven't said it, but these are not like ranked i mean the placement on the list in terms of for example gops's house is worse than of light that's not the case here um i'm just gonna place them in the individual tiers not by ranking all right what's next school scape uh this is my favorite hub world area why? Because it has a lot of, I would want to say, variety? Kind of? Okay, let's start off. You have entrance to a little stronghold that leads to Welbe. Kind of like that, you need to use Glowbox's kid. I can even draw him here. 
who's Glowbox's kid, to get him here to the little entrance thingy for him to open the doors to Well Bay. I like that. Uh, Sanctuary of Stone and Fire. I like how they show that you need Glowbox and Carmen to unlock the sanctuary. Carmen for uh, getting rid of the thorn. And Glowbox to do the rain dance. I kind of like that. Tomb of the Ancients. And there's a big lava pit. I find it kind of weird, I guess. Uh, that they show you this early on. But whatever, it's cool that you can see it. Um, and finally, there is also Pirate Ambush, which I don't know why, but I really like. I'm 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 one of the only people probably who like that part of the game. And I don't find it to be that painful in terms of the amount of length that it takes to complete. Um, I, I don't just like it, I guess. It tests your ability to dodge, maybe? I don't know. Also, more interactions with Clark, which is cool. And yeah. So I can say. So you are gonna go into the A tier. I really like this hub world. Hub worlds are not on the same level as levels. I know that's sound dumb. But yeah, in terms of hub worlds, this is definitely my favorite hub world area thing. Alright, next up, Menhir Hills. Menhir Hills. Um, shell segments are pretty cool, I think. But in Revo, however, the, the rotation speed is so quick, I wanna say. Makes maneuvering really loose, I wanna say. But I mean, it's cool riding around the shell, anyway. You can do some cool movement with it. Um, the fact that you need um, to help Clark um, live, I guess, with the elixir of life, I find pretty cool, I guess. Oh my gosh, another bug of Merc? Uh, music, wow. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, what I was talking about. Oh yeah, that you need to save Clark. I think it's pretty cool, but I don't, don't like how you have to re replay most of the level. But I guess uh, otherwise the level would be a bit too short, I would say, in terms of feeling of length. I don't know if I'm explaining this well. Um, and the final section, I love it a lot. Basically, you're just going through the hills, you're going 90 degrees up, I guess. You climb the hill, and then you end off with the shell, you jump into the portal, I really like that. Um, in terms of backtracking, I honestly don't really like the way you backtrack here. You, can, you only have to use the rain mask here in the middle of the night, which would be fine. However, um, it would be an really annoying to just go back. I mean, you can game over, I guess. You can game over, but like, come on. Casual player would probably wouldn't think of that. Um, and... And if, do you think that you have to game over? Um, is it the last, th it's the last time it's gonna appear on the list? Let's just say that. But yeah, overall, I think this could be a B tier. And I think I underestimated uh, the amount of space that I will need. So, that's scary. Um, you know what, let me quickly, um, let me quickly just extend the list. Um, I'm gonna do 4,000, for example, in this. Then casual, alright, then I can extend this. Yeah. 
There we go. Now I can copy this then. And then go here and paste quickly. Alright, it's in its place. Nice. So that is this. And now we move on to another level. Mars of Awakening. Can't wait. So this level is pretty fun. I honestly really like this level in terms of that you control Sam through the marshes. I love that a lot. It's not and it's not that hard to control him as well. His controls are really fun to go through. And the amount of stuff you have to dodge is really fun. And you don't have to backtrack at all. However, I don't like how this is accessible through the hub world because some casual player who might not know that and they have to go through the bio, they would have to go um, to the through the whole Marshal of Awakening, and then find out that uh, you have to replay the level to go to Cave of Bad Dreams. And I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just leave Cave of Bad Dreams at the beginning. Like why? What's why didn't they? I don't get it. I think this would have made it way better. But I find this level pretty pretty cool. I think this is gonna be our first S tier. The way of the way of collecting lumps is also really fun. Yep, first S tier. Let's go. Now on the contrary, we have Cave of Bad Dreams. I hate this level so much. Let me tell you why. I have a feeling, when I play this level, I have a feeling it drags on and on and on. And it will be a problem, except that the music makes you want to fall asleep, which I don't like. The visuals feel samey, in my opinion. The way these rocks um, I won't show it here, but the rock platforms, the walls, it's all pretty samey, I would say. There's not much variety in them. I would say the most variety in the level comes from the second section, from through the slide. I think that one is awesome, actually. But, um... Yeah, Fire of Geno is kinda lame, I would say. You just jump from platform to platform and. and just platform, which is, I think, a bad boss fight. Um, let me think. Uh, the orb puzzle, like, the, first, the first part. Um, in, it's pretty okay, I would say, though it drags on again. Especially the blue orb. Jeez. And also a bit earlier, uh, when you have to hover over to the plat one platform to fight with Mini Janos to um to get a orb. I don't really like that because there is an alternate platform which you fight Mini Janos and there is nothing. Pretty much. You have to hover over to fight even more of them. I don't like that. And there are no lumps in this version, which I find to be pretty dumb. Because otherwise this all could have been a bit more interest been a bit more interesting, I guess. And the fact that you can't come come back to the level or come back through the portal is pretty annoying. I mean I mean you can't go back through the portal. I'm gonna talk about it in the speed running a bit. But for now I wanna put this in the D tier, I think. To be fair, some of the some of the level could be fun, I guess. You know what? I'm gonna be generous today. It's gonna be low C. I have D reserved for something else. Let's just say that. Next up, canopy. Canopy, I don't like the spiders. The spiders are... I don't... Um, spiders are one of my least favorite enemies in the game. Definitely. 
the first one right the one right here in the canopy isn't actually that bad not gonna lie um the second section I, li I, I like overall that you can utilize glow box that you free him after one first of the game and he helps you out I find that pretty cool the overall that you save him and then you get him back to Globus's house I find it pretty cool. Um, the pi the pirate pirate boss fight. Uh, the pirate the boss fight I don't find pretty interesting. The pirate ship thingy. It's cool that you can do it in either three cycles or two cycles. Find it pretty cool. But I'm gonna talk about it more in the speed rank session. But if you do it normally, you have to do it six times, which I think it's too much. That takes so much time. And there are pi a lot of pirates here too. And I guess it allows you to... Um, to it allows you to show how the acquired gold shot from Glowbox can be powerful. Which I think is pretty okay. I guess that the fight can drag on. And the final section, I have nothing to talk about, it's just the end. Oops, let me close it real quick. Overall, I think this is gonna go to B tier. It's also nothing phenomenal, I wanna say. Now it's time for the well bay. Now for the well bay, um, this level I find kind of boring, I say, but not really. Okay, the first section. Um, the first section I would say is pretty boring, kind of, just regular art or our action, I would say. Um, I like I I I don't. Re really like the barrel at the end. It might be a bit slow for me. Actually, wait. Actually, I read that like that was in the PS1 version. Just re didn't remember it correctly. Um, The other thing I want to talk about in the first section. Um, I don't think so. Oh, what I can see is that they start introducing red pirates. The worst pirate type in the game, in my opinion. But it's only in one section, so I'm gonna give it a pass. Second section, I like how you can free Carmen. And then you can... Mm, I like how you can... Well, ride a shell here. I find it pretty cool. And then you can go... F through the door to unlock the cage. What I don't like is that if you crash with the shell, you respawn outside on the little beach area, which I find it's stupid dumb. Um, the other thing I don't like really is the fact that you're in the ho hover ability above lava or hot stuff. I recently discovered that I think it's hot coal um, to get four lumps. I don't really like, but what will you do? It's just revolution thing, backtracking, you know. And I like how you can swim through water a lot, and then free, and then go with Carmen to the end of the level. I, I like that. Um, I don't know what else to say. I think this is at no, I don't know, okay level. It's gonna go into B tier. Sure. Now it's time for Stone and Fire. The longest and biggest level in the game. Where do I even begin with this one? Uh, first off, I really like this descent. It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, you, although this level can get pretty boring, 
because we go through rocky stuff. And I think it's the longest level in the game that doesn't really help, I think. The thing that I really like here, though, is the there is a split path. You go, be, you go to either a fake temple or to a real temple. I like that they indicate that you go to Sanctuary of Stone and Fire on the right. I found pretty cool. It's like the hub worlds. They have these arrow thingies that show you what level to go. I like that. The fake temple is pretty okay. Good that it's optional, but it can be quite long in my opinion. And the shell section at the end could be kind of hard. But I don't think you will ever game over here because of red lumps. That's a thing. It's really cool that you can uh, test your skills with the shell. So that if you pass it, then you can save gold fist for the rest of the level. Although it's something really not useful for your parts of it. I still think it's pretty cool. Oh, what else can I say? Mini Jano. It, it's there. And... It's it's Mini Jano. But there's more elf than other Mini Janos, like in Cave of Bad Dreams. I mean, it's pretty alright. Oh, yeah, I haven't talked about it. The plum. The plums are really cool. I really like them. I like controlling them. Although I noticed that in Revo, um, you can control where you want to go with the plum. Um, I'm gonna show quickly. I find it weird how you can control where the plum goes based on your direction. So, for example, frame we look to that direction, the the plum would go that way. If you look that direction, the plum will go that way. I find it pretty cool because you can maneuver the plum more. So we're all now about two bonus areas. Um, the first one takes a while to get to with the plum. Yeah, it takes a while, which could be pretty annoying. And the second area requires um, hovering above lava ability. Now the question is, why in the longest level would you have a backtracking section? F and the fact that you can't go back is stupid in my opinion, because you have to go through the whole level, which takes ages. Although at the end of level you can hover to the portal, I guess. So that's fine. And yeah, the real temple. The real temple is pretty okay, I would say, though it can get. It, it make it make it kind make can make me go to sleep. Let's say. Because it it's quite long. Definitely the uh, definitely the black the black room, uh, where there are platforms, and then there is the orb. I find to be pretty cool, I guess, though. The the orb can get stuck. I don't know. And the fact that you utilize one of the guardian's umber uh, to get the second mask is cool because you have a guardian that doesn't want to destroy you. I find this pretty cool that he helps you and that the guard helps you for once. Uh, there's also a slide to the blue orb that I really like, I guess, but there are some turns that make me not like that section in a bit. Because they're so sharp that you can fall into the neighboring lava. Which I think it's not cool. This level... And I think this level can... I think it's gonna go between B and A. I think actually, it has a lot of content, definitely. I wanna place it in B. Sorry, Peyton. So what's next? Rainbow Creek, oh boy. Okay, so let's start off. The fact that you, you enter through Schoolscape is pretty cool. But I don't understand the logic behind that. Let me explain. So if you went to school's cave, then there's the same elevation here. There's also some water. 
Now, I don't understand... Was there some sort of waterfall earlier that um, made water go here? Elevation doesn't make sense to me. And I, I find weird how there is water, but then you go um, there to the top, like, five meters higher, and there's, like, a whole pit where you're, like, really high. I don't understand that at all. Okay, let's go through all the entrances. Precipice. I don't like the pirate spam here, not gonna lie. I find it kinda annoying. Um, our mountains, you unlock that after. You you save Clark in Tomb of the Ancients, which I found pretty cool. Now let's go through the pirate mines here. Appropriate name considering that there is gonna be real pirate mines later. But yeah, um, I think it's a pretty cool area. It has all types of pirates, which I find pretty interesting. And overall, the atmosphere here gets pretty dark, which I find pretty cool. So the fact that there's entrance to everything there, I find pretty cool. Well, I think it's a pretty cool area, but I think it's a bit tight in terms of where you can maneuver, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where to place this actually. I think it's gonna go normal B tier. Sure. I'm running out of space again? Come on. I need to be more harsh. Um, now to think of it, I wanna move down one level. Um, I think I'm gonna move down canopy. It's also a bit short. Which I don't like. Oh. Actually, hold on. I don't know which one to move. I wanna move either one of these. Not whatever, we're gonna move this later. Uh, but yeah, Rainbow Creek beat here. Pirate Factory. I find this pretty cool that there's a whole ass factory <laughs> where they produce pirates, I guess. But the question is, where do they produce pirates? That's one of the things that I wish they explained. And the Bitty Tank boss fight is pretty cool, and there's a bit of lore, let's say. Where are you free? Baby Globox, I guess. That is red. I don't know if it's an Unclad kid, but from one trailer, um, it shows that the kid is born through an egg that fell from the sky. I guess it could imply that they're an alien, I guess. I don't know. And finally, that the pirate factory has entrance to the sanctuaries of lava. I find it pretty cool. Um, I like also the I also like the music here. And the pirate zombies are creepy. Not gonna lie. Look at his design. Don't tell me that it's not scary. Like for real. Okay, this is just a lump in the rain map. Um, do, do I wanna place it? I wanna place it a tier. School Scave is my favorite, but this is pretty high for me, I'm gonna lie. And now you get to actual levels. Precipice. Now here's the thing. In Revo, for some reason, they switched up uh, the order. So, let's say... Precipice 1, Precipice 2, Precipice 3. There is... EC1, EC2, EC3, and there is also um, Top of the World 1 and Top of the World 2. What I find weird is that Precipice consists of Precipice 1, then goes to Precipice 3, then goes to Echoing Caves 2 and 3. That I find pretty weird. Then there are Echoing Caves that start off at Precipice 2. Then go to Echoing Caves 1. And I go to, to Top of the World 2, which I... Uh, why? 
And then top of the world one is just a mini game. I find this pretty weird. And it makes a feeling a bit weird here, definitely. But uh, whatever, that's fine. Maybe it's for the buyer, I have no idea. And your precipice one, it's pretty fun, I guess. You can, you can you just run away from the sh ship. It's pretty satisfying for sure, like escaping the danger. And there's precipice three, or precipice two, I don't know. I guess it kind of fits in in in, in elevation. I guess. But I don't understand this. Why is it dark? And it becomes bright. I don't understand that. And yeah, after uh, Precipice 2, there are, there are a lot of pirates in Precipice 2. Definitely. Which I find pretty weird. Um, you have to defeat one red pirate to get to Precipice 3, which is Echo in Cage 2. Then we're right through the barrel. Now, barrels are pretty fun to control. They were my favorite parts of Echoing Case and Raven 2, that's for sure. I found them fun segments, and here is no exception. And the one thing they did here, which I forgot to talk about uh, Pirate Factory, is that you need to destroy two generators to access the Pirate Factory. It precipices the level that has one of them. The, the ninja boss fight is pretty damn weird, not gonna lie. It's pretty weird boss fight that can be kind of tight and it can make you almost game over if you're not careful. Um, overall, I don't have anything else to say, but overall, I want to say that this level is pretty darn good. One of my favorites, definitely in Rubble. The one thing they did, I think. And I need to fact check this. I need to go to. Um, I need to go to one of my runs real quick to see if they fixed one bug that was pre that was present in um, Rayman Two. That's in Echo in, in Precipice One and Two. You didn't auto jump, which was pretty bad. Let me see real quick if they fix that. Okay, I guess it doesn't happen in uh, Precipice 1. But in Precipice 3 it does happen, aka okay, Precipice 2. Whatever. Uh, I'm gonna talk about it more in... Echo in caves, probably, when you get there. Um, but yeah. Let me open chat again. Right. Next stop. Pirate Mines. This level is so boring and short, it has no point to it. So it literally has no point in existing except for the Rain Mask, which is used for oh, backtracking. Yeah, here's that. Here's the. Here's the retrying of the. Here's the retrying of the rain. What is this? Why did I make this? Why? Anyway, um, I don't know if it's only for me, but there is a bug. As I thought, I to come back to the overworld for the minecart thing. Literally, when you go to Rainbow Creek in, in the minecart, then it, it it doesn't go. It just makes you stay here and makes you teleport to Pirate Mines again. I don't like that. Jeez, this is rocket lava. Jeez. And then you go through the, uh, through the ship section, which is really bad. Honestly, just not fun. It makes you go sleep. And just overall really, really boring. This will be first the D tier. Because this one has no point in existing if it has 15 lumps and all of them in one area. 
At least Cave of Bad Dreams has a purpose. And I don't like that level. Okay, next up, Echoing Caves. So yeah, now I wanna check something real quick in Echoing Caves. I'll see if they managed to fix one thing that they didn't like about Rayman 2. I guess they don't analyze the bridges here in that version, huh? Literally no bridges are being destroyed. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, they don't destroy the bridges in Rabo. That's pretty weird. I guess it kind of ruins uh, the action in the level. I don't know. Doesn't really affect that much. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I like how you go through to the top of the tower. I really like that. And you escape from this elevating water. That's pretty cool. It it I kinda it kinda makes you feel ten tension, I guess. And then you go f to the real echoing caves one. Uh, in which you have to activate four switches to enter the next area. Now this section would be pretty awesome with all the added details. The added details are incredible. But they made one thing s so much worse that it makes me kind of hate the level sometimes. And that's the amount of pirates that they added and the types of them. There are a lot of red pirates like oh my gosh. I think there are three or four, or even five. That's just too much, in my opinion, for a singular section. And there are a lot of them overall, which I don't see why. I guess they protect the stronghold thingy, but I don't know. I just don't like these red pirates. Uh, red pirates are their my second or least favorite enemy in the game. That too. And then there is Top of the World to Echo the Caves 3, which I kind of like, I guess. Yeah, I like that. There's second generator here, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, let me um, let me place it in B tier. It would have been A if not for the bad pirates, honestly. But whatever. Whoops. Beneath the Lava Sanctuary. Oh my gosh. First of all, why do they change the names? This is not this is not beneath the Lava Sanctuary. It's above the Lava Sanctuary, first of all. In terms of elevation. Does it make sense? Shen I like how we go for the swamp. There are a lot of details here, which I really like. The vines. Oh, I never noticed these vines. They're pretty cool, not gonna lie. And yeah, you have to go through the marshes to enter the mysterious sanctuary. And then there's the Shino boss fight, which I find pretty cool, I guess. But it's kind of spammy. That's the one thing I don't like. Let me get some food some snack oh hey this already played let's give that so that was the beta song second section I like how you can go with the flower um, but um, the lower and lower into the sanctuary. That's pretty darn cool. However, there's one issue or two. In one of the jumps, um, when you want a helicopter, it doesn't allow you. You will have to mash X, which could be pretty inconsistent, I think. But I don't know. And second thing, some of the jumps. Again, the timing is kind of dumb sometimes. So it's not like that. And then the third section. The one thing I like about Revo is that 
is how they made the rotating platform. Not the one that rotates and has lava. That kind of stuff. I like how they made it less grabbable. I think that it's not horrible to go through. Like that. Also, it has some people backtrack to this section because of feeling that they need to hover with the lava ability uh, down uh, to the cage which I understand completely why they would do that but you can just die and then hit the cage in the meantime or whatever and it will still count you can complete all in first go 100% which I think is pretty cool um, let me skip that. All right. Let me check the bus. There's one or two useful things in it. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what else? On? Um, the switch. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll go back to the backtracking thing. Um, even the, even if you could, um. What, what, what did I want to say? Um, even if you want to backtrack, you you unlock the hover ability next level. What I find stupid is that you can't come back with the hover ability and then uh, go back to the level by foot. Which I find pretty, pretty weird, but I guess you would use the portals anyway. Um... One other thing I want to talk about the now um the end the the door that not requires you to hit the switch. Um, I, I find it pretty weird. I I would say it's definitely better than Rayman Two. Definitely, that's all I gotta say because there is no gigantic thorn or whatever doing an appropriate stuff. Yeah, and the, the final section where there are like walls with thorns on them. I find it pretty cool, but like something I have to wait, which is annoying. And at the end uh there are fuzzies. I don't know if I can do a correct drawing of them. Yeah, these are the fuzzies anyway. I quite don't like the amount of spam that there is of them at the end. And what I like is that you don't go through the portal at the end, you just go through the door and then jump to the lava sanctuary entrance, I really like that. So, honestly, I kind of like this level a lot. It's one of the better ones in my opinion, especially the amount of detail. The amount of detail added, oh my gosh, in the one of the final sections with the moving walls they added so much more like detail like rips to the walls or something or you can see like outside of the stone for example um yeah also i decided um i don't think i'm gonna do speedrunning tier list today maybe another time then we can do some randomizer stuff then. I don't have Ravel on, by the way. So I won't doing, be doing any Ravel stuff today, except for this tier list. Lava Sanctuary, one of my favorite levels in the game normally. Um, the added detail here is phenomenal with these forms. However, I have one little problem with them. Um, the hitboxes in them. They're accurate, like really accurate. Which makes um, one of the worst um, of the worst things ever invented in Ravo. Um, two forny walls of hell, let's just say. Um, so there is there is an entrance. There are the doors. Right, there are the doors going to destroy. Right, and what they did here. The thing that they did there is the uh, with the with the accurate hitboxes in the forms. They're so accurate 
that sometimes you have no idea why you died there. Some of them overlap with the entrance, which I don't like. Seriously, like, why Why would you do this, ever? It makes it so much harder. Like, I, even, even for me when some of these could be easy, I guess. When these could be easy. I still don't like them at all because of how tight they could be. I don't know. Well, I don't. Well, what I really like about this section, anyway, by the way, is the big lava waterfalls. I really love them. Um, and the music that plays too. It's literal em EMT. That's um, that's for you, Ab. I guess. I like how, also, the main point of the level, you unlock the hover ability above lava, which I find pretty cool. Um, that you can fly around. It's incredible. And then there are like, big, um, oh, they're cold, but they like make you, f they force you to go in a certain direction. Fly into certain direction. Fans! That's what they were called. They were called fans. I like that. And yeah, the first section is awesome. The second section is even better. You go for like literal, literal corridor of lava and thorns. I love it so much. And the Fouge boss fight is just moi incredible. I love it so much. The fight that he takes. Your ability of hover away is really horrible, and it's a big deal. And you fall down to the area, area, area where you run from him, and then you destroy the stalactites. I really like that. What I don't like is that uh, when you finish the level, you get the hover ability again. But at least what they did is that they uh, made it so that you can fly above hot stuff only, which I think is fair completely. What do I think of this level? Honestly, despite its flaws, with, with the four walls, this is S tier. I I love this level so much. It's incredible what they did there. Tomb of the Ancients. First off, um, let me put this in D tier. This is absolutely my least favorite level in Rayman uh, Revolution. And specifically in Revolution, I'm gonna explain why. Um, actually, it can be, go way lower. Yes, it's so. I hate it so much, it can go even lower. If there was an F tier, I'll place an F tier. Okay. First of all, you run for a spider, one of my most favorite enemies. We like there are a lot of spiders there. Um. Oh yeah, that's for the extra. All right. That's some cool music. I don't know. You run for the spider. Oh, the spider's in the song, by the way. I like that. Um, then you have to activate three switches, which is fine in itself. However, this, the, the, they are, the second and the third one are blockaded behind red pirates. That is horrible. Especially the second switch. The second switch is the worst, apparently. It combines spider and red pirate, which I find pretty annoying combination. It takes so much time to defeat both of them. And then um, there is also 1000 flum area in this, uh, this level as well. And it's still there, but you don't like 1000 flums, you just go through. Like a uh, marathon of defeating 6 red pirates, which is pretty annoying. And overall, they are just like normal lumps, which is stupid. Um, another thing, um, two positions too. They introduced the, my least favorite enemies in the game. Freaking bats. I hate bats so much. Mm. I hate bats so much. 
Why? Well, they're really small, so they're hard to aim. They move really, really quickly. That's for sure. Makes it harder to avoid, to aim at them. And then they hit you. Spinning and they're in groups too. I hate them so much. So anyway, there are like a lot of them in slow. Just dump. And also red pirates too. I don't even have to mention that. And the two split paths, one for completions and the other one for um normies, I guess. I find pretty cool. Um I don't really like this one, I'm gonna skip it. Sure. <laughs> the bonus area. The bonus area is also pretty mediocre, I would say. You just flap the barrel and then go with the barrel on the swamp. I don't know how to say it. But yeah, it takes a while to move around here. Which I don't really like. I'm gonna try a bit here in the meantime. And at the end of the bonus section, there is a spider which will hit you unless you're like really good at dodging. Which I don't know how you are, but whatever. And then there is another section where you have to like go through uh, this. You have to hit switches to disable the. Electric fences or whatever, which I think is pretty all right um, The little stronghold thing Is pretty stupid because there's a red pirate that is dangerous. This is like the most this is the most Aggressive pirate I've seen Definitely Um and then you save clock, which is pretty cool. And there is one thing which I really, really despise. And that's you unlock 1000 lamp flu a chest. Which doesn't make sense. Because... Um, because Ranger Beat ate it. Ate the lamp. It doesn't make sense. My theory is that the lamp... Um, didn't go through the digestive process. And then it went out of... Razor Beat's body, I don't know. Um, that's, pretty, that's pretty weird. And then flew to Tomb of the Ancient for some reason. And then one thing that I don't like um, is is the... Actually, no, I really like the Lum, the Lum Magnet. It's pretty cool. But it's at the end of the level. Actually, no, that's fine. Um, I think it's pretty cool for backtracking. It's around time when you realize, oh no, oh wow, I should start backtracking. I think this is a pretty cool power up, but we're not talking about power ups, we're talking about the levels itself. Also, the play Jeff uh, cheat code isn't available. That secret area is in the game, I think, but it's not accessible, which I find to be pretty dumb and really not cool. And yeah. Overall, I just don't like Tomb of the Ancients. So I find pretty annoying. You know what? Since, since this is my tier list, I'm gonna do something funny. There we go. Okay. Because I will probably not place anything else in F tier. I mean D tier, although we'll see. Okay, final year of this. Overall, this has my three least favorite enemies, I already said that. And yeah. Iron Mount is next. Bro, you could've played that song in Prison Ship. What are you doing? Anyway. Iron Mountains. Um, I liked the version in Rebel, except for the first section. The first section, they they made it a bit worse, thanks to the Red Pirates. But at least you can avoid a lot of them, except for that one area. And the one thing they did, that I'm really grateful for, and I really appreciate that NC did, 
they fix the auto aim in the button section, which I don't know how the developers for PC mess that up. I have no idea, but I'm really grateful for that. Mm, the first section is pretty alright. I like the waterfall thing that you go through to the balloon. Then fight to the, f to the balloon to the Iron Mountains area, the Gloomy Island, I think it's called. Um, I like how you escape the robot chicken thing and save Globox's kids or like that. With the shell, the shell is back. I really, really like that. I will go through the shell riding one last time. And it's through like a lot of gravity. Okay, that's like the wrong color, but whatever. You just you just use the shell oh my god, you use the shell like, like this is the shell, right? And here is a oh, ramen. Yeah, you like go around this you c there are a lot of lumps on the way. Um and yeah. And you end off with escape from the gloomy island the shell, the escape from the robot chicken, and then you jump all the way to the entrance to the third section. Now the thing that reveled it way better than the other versions um, is definitely the boss fight at the end. They had the Chrome 14. That boss fight is awesome. I love it. It's way better than the pirate mines, that's for sure. Um, what else can I say? Um, yeah, the, what, the one thing I don't understand is what is so mountainy about this? I mean, I guess you can see the mountains. Like, you're really high in the air. Like, is that, is it really enough? I don't know. But at least they make you feel like you're really high thanks to the third section. This is something that Paramise didn't write in PC. But yeah, this level is pretty incredible, honestly, for its own. It's like, it doesn't have its own unique twist, I would say, except for Grolem and the balloon. Actually, balloon is f to the, with the entrance of the precipice. Um, yeah, it doesn't have, like, a twist, I think, except for the robot chicken, maybe, in the Grolem. But yeah, I think this is pretty cool level. Definitely is gonna place really... A tier. It's gonna go to A tier. And yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this could be the last A tier. You're gonna see on the list there. Finally, we have last two levels to go through. Prison ship. Prison ship is incredible level. You slide down through the first half of it. And it's just really fun. The thing I don't like is the end of Prison Ship 2. Are there just like circular area and there are lumps? It's kinda. It's easy to collect them, but if you fail, you have to reload the level. And section. Which is quite sad. Um. The third section. It's pretty cool. I guess. The only thing I don't like is the fight of two red pirates. Oh my gosh. Why? Why the red pirates? And the fourth section is incredible. Flying through with the shells really fun. And actually, you know what, guys? I was wrong. This will be the last eight year. There we go. And finally, it's time for the final level in the game. Crow's Nest. The fight is incredible, honestly. You start off with a normal fight where uh, Grolgoth shoots at you, and then he throws bombs at you, and you shoot them back, and then he falls down. That you do three times, but there's a twist. Mr. Beast wants to jump at Rayman, but then the floor collapses, and you like fall down. And you you think you're almost dead, but then Lee saves you, which is pretty cool. And then you get onto the flying shell again. Just 
awesome. I love it. And then you have to get ammo to um, defeat Razor Beards, Grogoth, yeah. But the one thing I don't understand, Rain has the f hover ability above Lala. Why, why can't he fly above it? I don't understand that. Like, literally, why can't he hover? Was it because of a surprise? That would make sense because um, in Rayman Origins, in the PSV exclusive cutscene, you can see Rayman uh, fall through, um, fall down the hill or whatever, and then he safely hovers or whatever. I know, so it would make sense that it was from the surprise. Um, but yeah, this final fight is also pretty awesome, but it's not really comparable to other levels, I would say. I think this is... I think it's gonna go into B tier, maybe. But it's gonna be pretty low B tier. But yeah. We did it. I think we did it. We did the... Casual tier list of everything. Hear this in its full glory, I guess. Actually, let me just do one thing. There we go. Here's the full tier list. Enjoy, I guess. Um, some of the placements are definitely, definitely could be different. That's for sure. Let me let me switch. Sure. But overall, yeah, that was my list. Um, I'm not gonna order these because I don't really like that. But I can try. I can try actually. Let me try. Go, okay, but it's pretty low. East plane, this a bit higher. Let me go through top. Marshes of Awakening is just not my favorite level, let's be honest. It's Lava Sanctuary. What am I doing? Lava Sanctuary, you're going on top as my favorite level. In Revolution. You're really fun. Here, do I want to switch something? I don't know. I don't really care. Honestly, about these. I don't really care about these placements at all, actually. But just know that um, Lava Sanctuary is my favorite level in Revo. Oh, nice. Um, this is my favorite level in Revo. And this is my least favorite level in Revo. So, yeah. Again, this is the list. It is. What did this I guess? Let me let me correct this actually because it looks kinda not nice. Um let's do it like this and like this. Hey there we go. Now for the final time This is the list. Y'all can look at it I guess And yeah that's all I can pretty much say. That was honestly kind of exhausting, kind of. I'm surprised this took me an, over an hour. Honestly. But whatever, I guess. Um, yeah, if, I'm not gonna do this speedrunning list today. Maybe next time. But yeah, so I wanna say this is my last stream from Atlanta. Tomorrow my new PC is gonna get built. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, uh, next week, if everything goes correctly, I can start running PC Raymonds again without any issues. So that's pretty cool. And I don't know what to say. Really, thanks everybody for watching, I guess. And yeah, we're gonna raid. Obviously. So let me do that, we're gonna read Cobalt, of course, because he's live, and yeah, thanks guys for watching, 
and see you later, I guess.